Okay, thank you very much for tuning in. In today's video, we are going to go over a few quick examples, relatively straightforward examples for kin calculating kinetic energy, mass, and velocity. Before we do that, please don't forget to subscribe to my channel, support my channel, step-by-step -step science, get all my excellent physics, chemistry, and math videos. You can give me a thumbs up for this one. You can share. You can subscribe. The notifications bell. And please leave me a comment. All that stuff. Let me know what you think of the videos. Thank you very much. Here we go. Kinetic energy. Now, a quick introduction, a review of what kinetic energy is. Kinetic energy is just the energy of motion. If you are in motion, if an object is in motion, then you have kinetic energy. The equation symbol for kinetic energy is Ke. I think this is one you see most often, Ke, but you might also see this E like energy kinetic, like you might see Ep for energy potential. But I think either kinetic energy, Ke, that's what I tend to use, or Ek, kinetic energy, kinetic. Remember the SI unit, the unit for kinetic energy, potential energy, all energy and work and heat and all that stuff is the joule, James Prescott Joule, J-O-U-L-E, abbreviation capital J. This is the equation that we used. You've probably seen this before. Kinetic energy is equal to one-half times m times v squared. Remember, we'll talk about this again, but it's just the v squared, not mv squared. It doesn't matter the order in which you do these things in your calculator. Remember, the mass must be in kilograms. M is for the mass. If it's given in grams, you have to convert first to kilograms. And don't forget, the velocity needs to be in meters per second. V, velocity, meters per second. One half mv squared. You can see all objects, in order to have kinetic energy, they have to have some motion. Sometimes we say velocity, sometimes we say speed, but it's te te uh, technically speaking, you're supposed to say velocity. But here we go with the speed. And here's one of our examples. A car is moving down the street, the road, with a speed of 20 meters per second. If the car, it's kind of a small car, has a mass of 600 kilograms, how much kinetic energy does the car have? Well, here's our equation. It's pretty straightforward. We're just going to use this equation the way it is. No rearranging, solving, plug the numbers in. Now, I like to write down 0 0.5 and 1 half. It's the same thing. Mass, 600 kilograms. The speed, we said, was 20 meters per second. And we're going to square the 20 meters per second. Don't forget that. And you will get that's actually 120,000 joules, which might be better for significant figures if we wrote 1.2 times 10 to the 5 joules. Now, one of the most interesting things is with kinetic energy, of course, is what happens if we double the velocity. So we're going to do twice the velocity. We're going to speed the double. If the speed is doubled, what is going to happen to the kinetic energy? Is it going to go up? Is it going to go down? Or is it going to stay the same or something else? So let's just check it out. We can calculate it really quickly. 0 0.5, 640. So we double the velocity, double the speed. and But remember, it's double the speed squared. So it's like doubling the double. And when, so the kinetic energy is not going to just be 240,000 because we're doubling and then we're squaring. It's going to be four times as much. You can see that this value, 480 times, is 4,000. 4,000 is four times this value of 120,000 joules. So please don't forget that, okay? When you, when you double the velocity, you quadruple the kinetic energy. That's why... When you're driving a car, if you're going really fast, you can hurt yourself because it takes twice as much work. Excuse me, four times as much work. Why did I say twice? Four times as much work to stop or energy to stop you. So be careful and don't forget it's not just velocity, but it's velocity squared and it's four times as much. Okay? Now... Here's the next one. It's a girl. She's riding her bike, and she has a speed of 5 meters per second. And her kinetic energy, her and her bike together, they have a kinetic energy of 550 joules. And we want to know what is the mass of the girl and the bike together. Here's our equation. Now, this time we want to solve for the mass. we got to solve for the mass, so we got to get rid of these other things over to the other side, so to speak. And the easiest way to do this, now there are more than one way to do this. But either way, I always tell my students, when I see a one-half here, one-half mv squared, where else do we see a one-half? I can't remember it right now. But one-half, the easiest thing to do is just to 
multiply by 2. So I make this little line. I'm going to multiply both sides of the equation by 2. So I get 2ke. Ke times 2 is 2ke, and 1 half times 2 is 1. So we lose the 1 half, get rid of the 1 half, which is what we want to do. We move it to the other side, and we're just mv squared. Now we want to know the mass, so we got to get rid of the velocity squared. So now we're going to divide by velocity squared. When we divide by velocity squared, we get that the mass is equal to 2ke divided by the velocity squared. We're given the ke, it's uh, 2 times 550, and the velocity squared. Remember, once again, you got to square the velocity. This is 5 times 5 is 25, so this is 1100 divided by uh, <clears throat> 25, and you get that the girl and her bike have a mass of 44 kilograms, just like that. Okay, and the next one is we have a Billy, and he's going to drop a rock with a mass of 0 0.45 kilograms. He's going to drop that from a cliff into the lake below, and it has a kinetic energy. The rock just hits the water is 140 joules, and we want to know what is the speed or what is the velocity of the rock just before it hits the water, not when it's sitting there in the, at the bottom of the lake, uh, but just before it hits the water. So now we're going to take our same equation, and this time we want to solve for the velocity. Now, this is a little bit more complicated. Okay, now remember in the potential energy video, we use the magic math triangle, and you could technically do that for the magic math triangle for this case for kinetic energy, but the mathematics and the math is a little bit more unconventional and a little bit more uh, messy, so to speak. But we're just going to uh, do this is a good way to you know practice your algebra. We're going to multiply by 2 again, same thing. Now here we have the same equation we had in the previous example, but now we don't want to solve for the mass. We want to solve for the velocity squared. So we're going to move the mass over to the other side by dividing by the mass. And now we have that the velocity squared is 2 times the kinetic energy divided by the mass. But we don't want to know the velocity squared. We want to know the velocity. So in order to get rid of the velocity squared or get rid of the squared, we're going to uh, take the square root of both sides. When we do one thing on one side, we got to do the same thing to the other side. And uh, you can see that if I take the square root of v squared, it's just v. But then i got to take the square root of 2 times ke divided by m, which I can now just plug the values in the square root of 2 times 140 divided by uh, 0 0.45 kilograms. There's nothing to square here because we got rid of that with our square root. And then we find out that the speed of the rock, the velocity of the rock, just before it hits the water is, I, I think I did in my calculator, I got 24.9 something, I rounded to 25. So therefore, we have our uh, two significant figures, and we have 25 meters per second. So there you go. That is kinetic energy. That's actually translational kinetic energy, not rotational or some other kind of kinetic energy. That's translational kinetic energy, and that's usually, you know, the simplest kind of kinetic energy that we're usually talking about. So thanks for watching. Hope you found the video helpful. If you did, please do all of the following four things. Subscribe to my channel. Get all my excellent physics, chemistry, and math videos. Once again, please uh, give me a thumbs up for this video. Please uh, leave me a comment. Please subscribe. And don't forget that sharing is caring. Share the video with all of your friends and show them just how much you care. Thank you very much for watching. We'll see you in the next video.